Well, hey everybody, this is Ross. We're gonna go over the fall garden today. I'm gonna plant some things. We're gonna talk about um, what I'm spraying, how I'm feeding these things. Uh, what are some of the prep, in a sense, that I'm doing? What are the plans for my fall garden? Because we've had such good success with our summer garden, um, I've decided to grow a lot of different crops this year. Things that I have never tried, and um, you know that really gives you the confidence, in a sense. And we talked about this in an episode of our, our podcast, Fruit Talk. But I have things here like endive. Uh, I actually have some endive that we planted really months ago. Um, we planted a lot of these crops for the fall garden. We started that around July 1st. And that's really where, in all honesty, in this climate, in this area, you should start thinking about that. You could even get some transplants in the ground July 1st. I mostly direct seeded everything um, around July 1st, some on July 15th. And now we're coming in here again, it's around August 15th. We're gonna come in here and actually do another seeding. Um, now that things have really cooled down um, considerably, in all honesty, guys, it has been so warm this year. July was a scorcher. Um, most of August was very warm up until maybe the hurricane that came through. And really only this last week, week and a half, things have started to cool down in that we're no longer getting daytime temperatures in the 90s. We're staying pretty consistently in the 80s now. And the nighttime temperatures are now in the 60s rather than the 70s. So as a result, things, like I said, they're cooling down. And now it's kind of getting closer to that fall time. We are approaching September. And therefore, you know, this is really the good time to be planting some of this stuff. So what am I, what am I planting here? We're gonna do some carrots. Um, I actually did some seeding already of carrots and different things. And some of it succeeded and some of it didn't. And the reason for that, in this particular bed, we had seeded quite a bit. And we actually had some larger broccoli plants. And you can see some of these larger brassicas behind me. These are actually brassicas that I had direct seeded in the spring. And due to the fact, just a lot of different reasons of why a lot of the spring garden this year, there was a number of reasons I could get into. Plain and simple, these plants and these beds were not really off to the right start. And therefore, these brassicas went through the entire spring and now almost the entire summer without mostly any issue, which is kind of insane. It's really a testament to this location of the yard in that most of the, the sun comes actually in the afternoon. We're now in the evening um, and a little bit in the morning, but for the most part, most of the day, this area is mostly shaded. So it's a partial shade bed for most of the summer, but in the fall and the spring, when the leaves fall off these shade trees, these beds in these areas are getting a lot of light and a lot more warmth than they would have otherwise, which is really when they need it the most. So in a sense, these guys have been able to go through this process, even though given that really poor start to the season, why rip them out is my thought process. Let's just let them grow, get them through this portion of the season. It, which is weird is that I haven't had any sort of white fly damage. I haven't had any um, cabbage moth damage on these plants. It's been so strange. Whereas the plants here underneath the insect netting in this particular bed right here have actually been attacked by the cabbage moth. I've had almost no white fly this year. I think a lot of that is because I've protected most of the crops for most of the year. Either we had plastic on them, then we had some uh, mesh on them, and now we have fleece on them in the form of this insect netting. So the white fly has been mostly a non-issue, plus the silica that I spray, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But I have some BT in here, I have some Foliage Pro in there, and I have some Dynagrow Protect, which is a silicon, um, a silica supplement that really helps, I think, that silica helps with uh, the natural pest resistance of these different plants that uh, normally would get attacked quite heavily. So for me, I think there's obviously some great value in that product, but believe it or not, underneath this, this uh, insect netting, I had a lot of damage to the seedlings I planted in July. And I actually had some larger brassicas, as I mentioned, similar to this size here, this mid-size, 
and it was kind of creating a gap in the insect netting. It's not that the insect netting wasn't working, um, there was a gap in the netting. I mean, the netting just wasn't big enough to cover the large plants that were in the bed. So therefore, these cabbage moths were getting underneath the netting and then obviously laying eggs on the brassicas and things that were in here. And the caterpillars were then eating the tender growth, the tender seedlings that I had planted. So not good. And what I'd recommend, if you're struggling with cabbage moth, you just have to use BT. It's Bacillus thuringiensis or something like that. Uh, it's organic. It's not going to harm us, at least to the knowledge that, uh, that exists. And also, um, it is going to get rid of your cabbage moth problem. Those caterpillars will uh, just pretty much disappear at that point. They will die. Um, so we need to come in here. What I'm going to do now that it's colder, as I mentioned, we're going to start spraying um, a little bit more heavier for the, the caterpillar, for that cabbage moth but also we're gonna come in here and do some seeding. And it's a shame that some of this didn't make it. Like I had some carrots that were in here, uh, some seedlings as an example. I had, um, let's see, I had some chard. I had some, I think I had some broccoli rob that was, in all honesty, I think it was too warm for the broccoli rob and they bolted. Um, I had some kohlrabi by chance. I may have had some chicory in here. So there's a number of plants that that actually did well in this heat, which was good because it was so warm. And what you got to do is really just, if it's not going to rain, in all honesty, I should probably have a sprinkler system right here to water this whole area. Uh, because during those days in July and, and some of those warm days in August, you just need some water to cool things down. Even with this perfect location that they're in, I think it's a really a good idea to be on top of the watering, especially for those young seedlings. So things have bolted, it's okay, but, and some of these things, I got, I lost them to the cabbage moth. This bed over here has done phenomenal for the most part in that the carrots are still going strong. I have some endive there. I have the fennel that's coming up in this bed uh, behind the carrots. They're a bit shaded. Certain things are a bit shaded in here. It's not the most ideal, but I do have some brassicas these are Brussels sprouts and broccoli and things that are coming up and they look really good. So that's not a whole loss in terms of direct seeding, um, whereas this bed certainly was, and it's a bit of a shame. We did also direct seed this whole section of this particular raised bed, because you can see the wooden sides here. Uh, but normally this is actually a cold frame. So when we get some frost, a couple frosts, I will put the cold frame over top of this once again as I remove it sometime in the spring when we are past the chance of frost and actually it's probably a detriment to have them covered with plastic. But we will cover these guys with plastic to pretty much have food all winter time is really my goal. We also have, believe it or not, some low tunnels that we've set up. And so this whole thing as well is going to be giving me food throughout the winter time as well. So we're basically not just thinking about this in the sense of a fall garden, which for a fall garden, you should have planted sometime in July or transplanted sometime in August in this, loca this location. But we're also going to be doing this for the winter time. So yeah, it's a bit too late to direct seed for the fall, but it's not too late to direct seed for the winter time. So the low tunnels will basically be, you know, they come up to about my waist, maybe about two and a half feet high, uh, maybe three feet at the most, but actually I think it's, I think it's around two to, two to two and a half feet with these lower, uh, not as wide tunnels, but they will have be covered with the plastic and that will continue the progression and the heat, uh, the soil temperatures that these plants need to continue to grow throughout most of the winter time. Uh, and then of course, again, in the spring. So I'm gonna just have mostly some greens. We've planted, as I said, over here in this section, direct seeded um, arugula, endive, and all kinds of broccoli. So the broccoli's looking all right. There's mixed results there. The arugula looks great. The endive is kinda eh. So, you know, certain things obviously did better when we direct seeded them than not. But again, it's not a whole loss for me. I don't feel, 
uh, any, you know, much pressure at all. I just need to get this stuff in the ground and some of this direct seeded. Now, what I will say before I go into sort of the spraying in a bit here and also doing some seeding is that some of these broccoli plants, because I have the Brussels sprouts, which look fine. They look great, actually. They're, I have no doubts that they're going to put out some, uh, they're going to do their thing in the fall. But I have some broccoli plants here, a particular variety that I uh, am forgetting the name of it. But if you look at Fedco's website, on their site, it just says that it won't properly bolt in the summer heat. And that's kind of what happened for a couple of these, is that they should have bolted and then never did. And now that they've never bolted, some of them are too far advanced. These other guys here are quite young still, and actually they're doing great. They haven't even shown any signs of bolting just yet. But I have these other ones here, these larger two. I have about maybe two or three that if I look closely, maybe I'll find some others. But what they're doing is actually sending out some side shoots right now. And these side shoots make me worry and wonder if maybe these broccoli plants, because I planted them in the very early, well, sometime in April in the spring, that now they're kind of just like, well, I missed my window of opportunity. I'm probably not going to bolt and head up like a normal broccoli. Maybe they're only going to give me side shoots at this point. I don't know. Um, if that's the case, I would consider taking them out and putting something else in its place. So if anybody has any idea on that, what I'm going to do though, in the meantime, is kind of hedge my bets. So without knowing exactly what's going to happen to really any of these plants, I think it's a really good idea to hedge your bets most of the time. So what I like to do with these larger plants is I want to come in here anyway for the winter and actually plant some things out. And I want to have some winter crops so that uh, basically I can grow underneath this cold frame, have myself some food, and therefore um, if these guys fail, it's okay because I still have food as a backup. So that's kind of what I'm thinking in my mind about this particular situation. Now, I do have a carrot that I recommend, the Kyoto Red Carrot, except I'm basically out of seed. And I think I planted all this in an effort to try and get these guys to come up a while ago in July and they never did. I don't know if this variety, uh, well, really all the carrots. Actually, I only planted this one variety, so maybe that's why they didn't do so hot. I did keep the soil moist. It's been raining here quite a bit, so I don't understand exactly why the, these particular carrots didn't do well and never came up. I know they're hard to germinate, but I've had immense success for years germinating carrots. And I don't see really in my mind why they, they wouldn't have done well, but I have not really had much success, I guess, germinating carrots in the summer. So maybe that has a lot to do with it. But what I'm gonna do is get myself more of these crops in the ground and basically hedge my bets. We've got our greens over here already. So I've got the arugula, which is, by the way, incredible. If you're not growing arugula, uh, you're losing out. It's insane. You can pretty much grow it all year. It's just that it will bolt. It does get too warm for it. It does lose some flavor, gets quite bitter, but it's so, so good. Anyway, we're just going to make a couple trenches in here. I'm going to do a couple rows of endive. My endive is going to go right in here. And this is basically in between the broccoli plants. So I've got, even when I seeded this over here in July, I did the broccoli, but underneath is the arugula and underneath is the endive. So I'm not necessarily worried as a hedge. Again, I'm not worried that I'm not going to have food. So let's get some of these guys in the, in the soil here. I'm really excited for endive. I could even do a little bit of a harvest now. I know how amazing they are in salads. 
Now, I guess one really big key to this whole thing, after I seed all this, got to protect it. I got to have some sort of insect netting on it. I have to keep the cabbage moth off. I have to keep all the white fly off of these brassicas. Otherwise, they just will not have success. It just will not happen. So really big key there. And also, I just highly recommend uh, that you water them in really well. Honestly, you should be doing your seeding right before a, um, well, right before a rain, if you can, if you don't want to get the water out and actually hose all this stuff down. My soil is quite moist. And usually for this time of the year, some of you guys out there will not have moist soil. I am just lucky in that sense, this particular year, that the soil pretty much in the last couple weeks has really started to regain a lot of that moisture again. So I have had really, it's, it's a, a portion of my season where there is some dry periods here and there, but right around August 15th, we're back to basically being a very heavy clay soil that we have that's pretty much always moist or wet, uh, which is kind of a bad thing or a good thing, depending on how you look at it. I'm gonna do some, um, some mochum carrots. We've got broccoli rob. Broccoli rob is a fall crop, works out real well. Uh, this is my first year, however, growing it in the fall, which I believe is just basically when you have to grow it. There are different types of broccoli rob and Chinese broccoli, it can be called Kai Lan. There's the happy rich variety. There's different types of this stuff. So, you know, even if you're not necessarily, um, well, even if you, you don't really necessarily have broccoli rob, the particular variety is really important because each one of them will grow better at different times of the year. So you kind of have to pay attention to that. And I wish I knew that broccoli rob was a fall crop before I tried to do it in the spring. But, you know, you live and you learn. And that's the whole key here, guys. We keep learning new things. Now, I do have a ton of carrots as it is. However, this is basically going to ensure me right here, this little row of carrots is going to ensure that I'm going to have carrots basically all winter. Anytime I want to come out here, I can open up this cold frame, prop it up, pull out a carrot and have myself fresh food. So that's really, in my opinion, one of the best things to grow at this time of the or to start at this time of the year and to have it all winter time because you're just not gonna have much else. You can honestly plant yourself some carrots in this climate and then actually in the, in the uh, spring when the ground thaws out, you can actually harvest yourself some carrots then that have been there all winter time and that don't need any protection for the most part. You, you will get some pressure from slugs maybe or different things so you probably want to protect it with maybe some netting or something. But in terms of the cold, you don't have to worry. So that's kind of what we're doing here, guys. We're going to come around here and do different crops. I've got, like I said, chicory. We'll do the broccoli rob. The um, What's the other thing here? The kohlrabi I want to put down in here. We have to reseed some of this. Maybe I'll, I'll deed, uh, well, not reseed, because I actually have a ton of broccoli rob coming up in here. We have a ton of beets in the middle row, more broccoli rob. We have actually some uh, broccoli that's still gonna be doing pretty well in here. I've got, that looks like maybe the chicory or something. We have some fennel over here. So all is not necessarily lost. We even have, believe it or not, a, uh, a Charente type here. This is the Savore melon that I'm growing. But along this back row of the bed, there is a, a row here that I could plant pretty much whatever I want. So I'm going to do that. We'll fill that little gap in there in this one. 
And then I'm gonna come in here with this spray, and that's kind of what I wanna get at here, guys, is that we're just gonna come in here and just start spraying each individual crop, especially to help, again, with this BT, these caterpillars, give these guys a little bit of assistance because they do, they really do need it. Um, and it seems like, by the way, the, uh, the cabbage moth's laying, laying its eggs, if you could believe it, on this melon, which is quite strange. So I'm gonna even spray the melon, but I'm gonna spray all this, and I'm sure we'll get a rain here at some point, or at the very least, I'll wash off this stuff before I eat it, and I'll be good. So, yeah, I wanna thank you guys out here for watching this one. Um, Start thinking about the fall garden, but also the winter garden. I know it's not too late for a lot of you guys out there for the, uh, the fall garden. Maybe you're gonna start now, whereas I had to start in July. So kind of get that whole thing rolling, but you know, think about the, uh, the frost protection, any sort of cold frame or low tunnels that you guys can set up. I've gone over that in quite a bit, but we'll show you as we go how we're doing that with these particular crops here um, because it's just going to be so so important for me so all right guys hit that subscribe button keep following us along with uh with the gardening videos all right take care